Hey guys, for today's video, I'm going to be testing two very exciting makeup launches to me. The first one is going to be the Natasha Denona Hygiene Primer Serum thing. <laughs> And then, these have been through it, okay? These are the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Sunkissed Glow Bronzers. It's Charlotte's new cream bronzers. Dang, these took a long time to get to me. I promised you guys I was gonna get a review up. I just didn't know it would take this long. I know there's a lot of craziness going on in the mailing world right now, so I'm not gonna complain, but I got very jealous of seeing everybody else getting theirs, but they finally made it to Florida. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> so we have a primer slash serum. So that's what we're doing. That's why we're starting Bare Face. So this is the Natasha Denona Hygiene Skin Glass Energizing and Hydrating Primer Serum. Normally, this isn't the type of product that I would buy from Natasha Denona, but it kind of looked really interesting to me. So I did end up picking it up. So you can actually get this right now at Sephora and the Natasha Denona website. And it was in stores in my local Sephora today. So that's awesome if you just want to pick it up. I ordered this from the Natasha Denona website. Kind of regret it because their shipping is kind of expensive. And then I also saw it in Sephora today and that would have been no money. But it's just how it turned out. This is described as a glass serum rich in antioxidants that act as a primer to hydrate the skin. It's supposed to be for all skin types. I want you to take a look at the box. I don't know. It'll kind of tell you some more facts about like the skincare benefits. It's vegan, all of that. I'm not a skincare expert, so I'm not going to act like I know anything about the ingredients or yeah, I don't know anything about this. <laughs> I'm not a skincare person. I just liked the way that this looked in the marketing. But if we look at the highlighted ingredients, it says one ingredient is gonna reduce shiny appearance of the T-zone and balance the sebum of the skin. And then another is supposed to restore skin's capacity to retain water and protects from evaporation and dryness. Will it make my skin feel good? That's what I'm curious about. So here's what the bottle looks like. It looks really luxe. I love the frosted glass. I love how they have the label kind of on the side here. I think that's cute. There's only one part of it that doesn't have the label and it's not a sticker. It's like actually part of the packaging, which is, oh, that's very, very luxe. And then you have the dropper. This is made in Italy and it has 20 milliliters of product if you needed to know. So it says shake before use. So that's what we're gonna do. $46, I hope that this is good. It's supposed to be good for anti-aging and dryness. So let's see, let me swatch it on my hand first. Oh wow, yeah, that gives a really radiant finish. Ooh, okay, let's test that on our skin now. That felt really nice. I don't know how much to apply. Yeah, this is definitely more so, I feel like a makeup primer rather than just skincare because that glitter is really, really strong. I suppose it kind of blends in, but you can see the glimmers in here. It's going into the skin really nice and quickly. Huh, it's not as hydrating as I thought it would feel. I thought it would just feel like an intensely hydrating serum, but I feel like it almost dried down really, really quickly. It did leave me with a really pretty glowy look to it. I'm gonna apply just a little more, but be careful if you have fine lines and wrinkles because I feel like the finish of this, it has some reflect in there, which I think can be slightly unflattering on fine lines. I don't know if you can see right here where my forehead scrunches. Like that's emphasizing that. I think it's gonna be fine under foundation, but I don't think this is something that I just put on and, and leave with. It's not that bad. It's only when I look really close, but this is just different than I was expecting. I mean, there's not gonna be too much to report about this product. It's gonna take a few more wears with a few different foundations, but I would say it, it, it did make my skin hydrated, but nothing intensely hydrating like I would expect a serum to, but again, I'm not a skincare expert. And it does have a great amount of shine to it, which I think is gonna be very pretty under foundation. So. Let's put a foundation on. I'm preparing to do a little face review of Rare Beauty's line, so I'm gonna use the Rare Beauty foundation. It's not my favorite. I think it's a little overrated, but should be good for 
this review because it kind of has like a medium coverage. So I want to see how the serum looks underneath. I never in my life thought I would be a foundation brush person to blend out my foundation, but here I am. It's all I've been using lately. I've really been enjoying using a brush. It's the oddest thing. Yeah, I can see a little bit of that glow from the primer underneath showing through. So if you like that glass-like glow, I do like the Natasha Denona. Now, can somebody who knows about ingredients let me know if the ingredients in it are actually good or any Anything special to warrant the price because if I'm thinking about it in terms of just a makeup primer I do like it I think it's nice but it's also $46 so I just don't know if <laughs> it's worth it or not but I think it did a good job of hydrating my skin but not too intensely but I do feel like I would need to go in with a moisturizer first and then use the serum and then put my foundation on so it doesn't act alone I would want to pair it with a moisturizer with my dry skin but it seems like a really good glowy primer. I do like it, but again, I don't know if it's worth it. There's a lot of really good glowy primers. Like now that I have Rare Beauty on my mind, the Rare Beauty glowy primer kind of does a similar job that the Natasha Denona does, but the Natasha Denona feels quite luxe. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of my makeup and we'll be back to play with the real exciting thing for this review. But I do the rest of my makeup, I just meant eyebrows and concealer. That's all I did. Because we have green bronzers, so I wanted to be powder free for this. I'm really, really excited to finally have the new Sunkissed Glow Cream Bronzers in my hand. Like I said, shipping took a little bit, but it's fine. She's here. So I ordered two colors, the lightest shade and the medium shade. They are currently available on the Charlotte Tilbury website and they just came out on Sephora as well. Though I did notice at the current moment, number one fair is already out of stock. So maybe there is a little bit of urgency to this review. I don't know. <laughs> so this is the box that it comes in. Super cute, very Charlotte Tilbury, lots of words. Like a lot of words, but okay. And then back again. We're very, very wordy back here. Let's see, where is this product made in? Made in Italy. 24 month shelf life. Ooh, I love to see that. That's good for a cream bronzer. Not that I listen to it, but you know, makes me feel better. So here's the packaging. This is a pretty big pan right here. There is 21 grams of product. And then here is the back. I actually like the sticker. I like how it goes with the theme. And then let's open her up. So we do have a big fat mirror and here is the beautiful untouched bronzer. This is the shade number one of Fair. Let me compare the size. Here is the powder bronzer. The powder bronzer is slightly larger, just slightly than the cream bronzer. In size, something about the powder bronzer feels a little bit more luxe to me, but I'm just being too picky. Let's open up the medium. I'm never too sure what shades to get in bronzers because sometimes I like a light bronzer and sometimes I like like a really bronzy bronzer. I was indecisive in color choice. Dang, that looks dark. Okay, I see why number one is sold out because two medium is... Hi, my work for me. I'll just be really bronzy. So here's the difference between one and two. And I always like how the fairest color tends to be a little bit cooler as well. So I like to have multiple shades. Anyways, let's touch it. Okay, here we go. I don't... Ooh, that's weird. It feels kind of like a souffle. <laughs> I don't... It's, it's not super creamy? Or what's the other word I'm looking for? I don't know. It looks very matte. Not dry, but it's like a powder, soft powdery kind of look to it. So that's light. And then here's medium. Ooh, I love how it feels. It feels so cool. Oh, these are two very different shades. This is going to be interesting. So we're definitely going to contour my nose with the first shade. Let's go and let's see how they look. By the way, I am totally getting ahead of myself. These bronzers are $56 each. That's very pricey. That's a lot of money. So this better be good in order to justify that. There are four shades in this line. And cruelty-free, best for dry combo and normal skin. Okay, Charlotte said a big F you to oily skinners. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's a cream bronzer, that's why. Long wearing, hyaluronic acid, 16 hour wear cream bronzer. And is sweat proof. I might have to go on a walk today. Let's do a couple of different application methods. I'm gonna first use the BK Beauty 106 brush, one of my favorite bronzing brushes, and let's see. It's so weird. So this one on my skin tone, 
which is more of like a light medium skin tone, is definitely cooler. So for me, this is gonna be almost more of like a contour shade. Huh, okay, by the looks of it, I thought that this was gonna be my favorite shade, but I actually think it might be a little bit too cool and light for my skin tone. Unless I'm wearing, like, you know how sometimes you wear a foundation even though it's not your color and it's too light for you? If I'm wearing that kind of foundation that's too light on me, this would be better. The spread was pretty nice, I think. But it wasn't like an emollient, smooth, creamy kind of spread, which gives me joy. But they do claim this is long wear, so I can see the fact that this wasn't a super creamy application or like too greasy or oily being because it's supposed to last longer. And it wasn't a bad application either, I'm not complaining. I kind of like the texture in theory that it's going to last longer. Okay, let's try a medium now and let's use a sponge. I like both methods of application. I think it applies well with both a sponge and a brush. So medium is my shade. This is a shade I prefer because it really does actually bronze my skin. If I'm looking for a cream bronzer, this is what I'm going for. It looked like, look at that. That looks like it would be too dark for me, but it definitely applies a little bit lighter, I feel like. I think it looks really, really nice and smooth. Take a look up close. It didn't disrupt anything underneath. I think this color is beautiful on me. Okay, I'm going to use a brush now on this side. Yeah, brush and sponge both do a good job. I don't think you can go wrong either way. I think I got a little bit more oomph from the color by kind of twirling my sponge in though, but you might want that control with a brush. Ooh, I like this. This is nice. Let me use the light shade now, and I'm gonna contour down my nose. So to contour, get it on my ring finger, get it on the other ring finger, go straight down the nose. So you can see there is definitely still a use for the fair shade on me. I think that this is a really great natural contour shade, you know? It's not too literal of a gray, so it still looks very natural in the daytime, just in everyday life, you know? When you want to use like a really great contour is in more editorial photography situations, but if you're just going out and seeing people, you don't want to be quite so literal with that really great cool toned highlight. So this is a really, really great natural contour for me. I think fair girls, you will really like the fair, and a lot of times Charlotte Tilbury does run a little bit dark, I feel like, especially with the medium, but I think the medium is a really beautiful shade on me, and I really like the way that this is sitting. It's definitely a drier formulation compared to a lot of my other favorite cream bronzers. Comparing it to the feeling of my other cream bronzers, they're more slick and, dare I say, oily and greasy feeling. Not a bad thing, just the best way to describe the differences in products, where this is more like mushy and moussey, souffle -y. Do you catch what I'm trying to say about the bronzer and the texture of this? But I think that's really great because I do tend to find that bronzers like these tend to last a little bit longer. It's just a matter of how dry do they look on the skin. And I know Charlotte did not say this was for oily skin, but if you have oily skin and you want to use a cream bronzer, I'm going to test to see the wear today. But typically bronzers that have consistency like this will do well or better on oily skin. I've been loving the Psy bronzer recently, but that one is a little bit more greasy feeling. Let's see how the colors compare now to the powder bronzers because I do have the fair and medium in powder. So let's see, just color wise, hopefully this helps you out. So here is the fair cream bronzer and here is the fair powder bronzer. The powder bronzer looks a lot lighter, which by the way, I do love the fair powder bronzer. I use it more often than the medium. So let's swatch them next to each other. Oh, those are so different. This is the fair cream bronzer and I can't even see the fair powder bronzer. Huh, but I still like the fair bronzer on my face, but those are nothing alike. <laughs> okay, and then let's go into the medium cream bronzer. 
powder bronzer. These definitely look a little bit more similar, but it seems like the powder bronzers actually run a little bit lighter than the cream bronzers. But I think the cream bronzers are also less pigmented because with this shade, I get a lot of pigment and I feel like they run darker on the skin, you know? That fair looks awfully fair, but it does show up as a nice deepening shade on me. These are a little closer, but again, it, this one kind of looks more like the fair, right? So those are the color differences if that helps you out. Okay, I'm gonna set one side with the fair powder bronzer to see if that makes a difference. I'll do this side. I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. So here's the final makeup look. I did kind of just an everyday bronze. If you've been tuned into the videos I've been posting, I played with the ColourPop Getting Fresh palette again. I wasn't super impressed with it the first time that I used it, but today I played with some more neutral tones as opposed to the greens and it was a solid experience today. So I use this shade all over the lid. This isn't one of the really like powdery shadows, so it applied great. So you can definitely get some awesome looks with this palette. It still is a good value. But them greens was not good, but anyway, it's <laughs> not what this video was about at all. So the Natasha Denona Hygiene Skin Primer, I'm happy I didn't end up doing a full dedicated review on this because honestly, I just don't feel comfortable giving you a final thought on this product yet. I need to definitely continue playing with it and let you know over time how it does and with different products. So far I do like it, I just don't know if it's going to end up being worth the price point at the end of it all, but I love the packaging and she said this is the first item in this line so I I'm going to assume she's gonna come out with more and I hope the packaging continues to be like this. So I like it, but I definitely need to continue playing with it. The skin stuff like that is always a little bit trickier. Now the bronzers, I feel confident enough to say I really, really like this. I have high hopes for the wear time. Unless the wear time ends up like being poopy, which I don't think it will, I really like this. Do I think it's worth it? Because I'm a Charlotte Tilbury stan, like yeah, kind of. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I think it applied really beautifully. I think just by the feeling of the texture and my experiences with different products, I think that this is gonna wear beautifully. I think the color's really beautiful. It's a different type of cream bronzer than what I typically use or typically prefer, but I think it's for the better, honestly. So yes, it is pricey. If it's something that is a little bit out of budget for you, you are not gonna die without this bronzer. I just uploaded a video talking about affordable makeup up that's just as good as high-end. I have some great options for you there, but if you really like Charlotte Tilbury and it's within budget for you, I think that these are really phenomenal. I'm going to continue wearing the bronzers for the rest of the day. I will give you guys an update in the notes about how I feel about the wear time on this, but I just, I think it's going to be good. I really, really do like this bronzer. The colors are it's a big jump between one and two. One is quite cool and quite light. The medium one does look intimidating, but I will say I think they really did pull lighter on the skin. Like I think the medium looks really fabulous on my light medium skin. So if you've tried either the Natasha Denona product or the Charlotte Tilbury product, let me know down below your thoughts. So far, I give everything a solid two thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and being subscribed to my channel. As you guys know, I always do makeup updates videos. So in the next couple of weeks, these will probably be in that makeup updates video to let you know what's up with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you so much for liking this and being subscribed to my channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.